All right, we got a Volkswagen short block here, Cora motor. This is uh, the last one I got laying around from behind the house. We're gonna blow this off and uh, pull it apart and see what's in here. See if we can use any of this stuff. Maybe build another motor. This is a bus case. So uh, that's always a good thing. Bus cases are hard to get. And uh, Cover there. Well, we'll just tilt this video up like so. I said I'm pretty sure I know it's empty because it was uh, upside down. And I got help carrying it up here. Got a little water in it. Zip the strainer plate off next. And we'll finish taking our 13s off the bottom. Take this off or you can't split the case, so get rid of that wood chip, don't need that. Fry that up. Just in the wash pile. Strainer, I need one of those, so uh, we'll put that off to the side, get that cleaned up and put that in the motor that we got in the stand. Uh, let me flip it around here. Taking these case nuts off next. Hmm. That's all where Neil said he's putting another video up. Way to go, Neil. You gotta keep in touch, man. We're each other's uh, support system, you know. Uh, a lot of guys in the garage are recovering from different things. If you watch YouTube to pass the day, some guys are depressed, some guys got injuries. I met body men that used to be body men that can't be body men anymore, and they like watching my videos. And uh, so you never know who's watching, who's commenting. There's a lot of guys that have done this for a long time that are retiring, but still like to keep in touch with it. I got a lot of guys like that also. Uh, I got an email from a guy the other day. His uh, dad can't talk anymore. And he likes to watch my videos and uh, show his son different things. And I thought that was pretty cool. It uh, opened my eyes to uh, the people that watch my stuff and what they get from it. So Sometimes it's never about the hater and all about the guy that's getting something, you know? 
I just remembered this case had a bad main stud. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to investigate it, see if it's even usable. Now my memory's coming back. It's a terrible thing to waste. Well, try not to get hit in your head because your brain never heals right. Uh, I remember this case now. This thing had the main stud falling out of it. And uh, that usually doesn't happen. So I'm expecting to see something wrong with the case in here. Uh, probably not repairable. But uh, maybe we'll get the crank out of here and a few other small parts. But uh, remember this one now. Now that it's missing a main stud there. Make sure you got all your bolts. I think we got everything. I'll go over with the magnet, get the washers off. We won't use any of these washers, not on the motor anyway. These are all uh, all flats. There should be spring washers on a Volkswagen. Helps uh, hold the torque in place. Keep stuff from vibrating off, you know. So, uh, One more 13 hiding over on this side. This is much easier to do on a stand, but a lot of you guys don't have stands, so. Sometimes you have to uh, change it up and keep them, bit of, uh, keep them different, you know. I've torn five or six down in the stands for you guys. Flip it over. Next thing we're going to do, we got all the bolts loose. We're going to uh, knock the oil pump out next. So. There we go. Get a hammer, hammer jammer. Sorry about that. Thought I had everything I needed. I was mistaken. I don't use this pump over. It's a low volume, small pump. I don't ever use those. I don't like that kind. This is even a aftermarket shitty low volume pump, which is even worse. Uh, Usually you have to put a high volume pump in a Volkswagen if you're going to use the old case over. After you line bore the case, uh, you can make the bearing straight, but the saddles on the case get wear in them, and it's hard to uh, get them to seal there, and that's where you lose your oil pressure. Uh, there, side clearance on the rods. Anywhere there's an oil leak, you know, it takes pressure up. And as the case starts not fitting as well as it did from the factory, you need to increase the volume of oil just to maintain the factory oil pressure so keep that in mind if you're going to build a motor you know go ahead and buy a little bit better pump they don't cost a whole lot more just the funny thing people just don't know to ask for them and a lot of people tell you you don't need it those are the people that aren't driving their cars They're taking them on trailers everywhere so you got to be able to drive it you know just like uh, Greg's car, he's got a little bit of a heat issue. That is a big motor in that car. I'm thinking that maybe uh, the crank was marked wrong because I did have some problems with the motor being extra wide. And I think that's a 78 crank, 78 by uh, 94. Not exactly what size that is, but it's a two liter. Uh, that would explain some things. That would explain the compression. I wanted to put uh, 180 spacers on that thing. I had actually bought some and took them back, but uh, the spacers are expensive from Remco, and after you buy the spacers, you have to make longer push rods, and that was more money, so it just started snowballing. So the compression could be lower on that motor, and uh, you might have to get that one back from Greg and uh, lower the compression on it or something or build him something more suited to the way he drives so I uh, in hindsight looking back you know everybody wants a big motor everybody thinks they want a big motor 
I would have been much better off to build Greg uh, Super 1600 like I got in my blue car. It's, uh, it's a joy to drive it. It never gets hot, and uh, you're never worrying about it. You know, it's just uh, driving smiles. So the performance motors will give you a little more headache, you know. And uh, sometimes you do got to make some adjustments for the heat. Make sure I got all my bolts loose here. Tilt this baby up. Split it open. There we go. That'll work. That'll work. I'm going to hit this right up here at the top. Not where it's going to uh, leak oil. There's no oil up here. Let's get it started. In case it come right apart. There's the dowel pin here and here. So you can sneak in here and just uh, lift up on the dowel pin gently. You know, don't uh, force anything. Same one down at the bottom. Here's the other dowel pin in the corners. I don't know what's going to happen when I uh, pull this out. I don't have the lifter uh, tool in here, so the lifters are going to fall, I know. But the crank should stay in there. So there we go. She's copper showing there. Good and worn out. Looks like it's had a thrust cut and a... Uh, ooh, rough thrust. Looks like somebody did it with a chisel. So... Uh, yeah, the funny thing is the threads look good on the main stud. It looks like the stud just came out of the case for some reason. I don't know why that would happen. I've never seen that before. So uh, I'll dig up a stud and uh, see what we got there. It's a flat cam, so it's sort of a later. Later, then have the four bolt in it, and I'm sure this uh, crank will be good. Torque. Throw that down there. And, uh, you can see our problem here with this motor. The bearing is uh, the feet out of the rear of it. So that's probably not repairable. Uh, they don't make a bearing with that big of a thrust on it, I don't think. So I don't know. We'll take it down to the scooters, let him take a look at it, and uh, see if he thinks he can put a cut on this, do a thrust cut, maybe line bore this and use it again just because it's a bus case. And uh, a dowel pen seems to be compromised too, like it was getting work from the, yeah, it's uh, this one's pretty much toast. A lot of guys would probably use this, but it's a, it's a failure waiting to happen. You can see the, uh, this is the dowel pen that holds the bearing in place and you can see the hole. This more than likely happened during assembly. This is what I tell you guys to mark your bearings. You can see where somebody put this together and smashed the dowel pin here. And eventually the dowel pin went over in the hole and it's been doing this. A lot of times when you do this during the assembly, it smashes the bearing and the back, the crank will seize up in this bearing. You can see how much copper is right in the area where the uh, bearing was compromised. It tightened the bearing up right here, pinched it. So that's a... Uh, it's important to line those holes up, mark your bearing with a marquee, you know, so you can get your bearing lined up with your dowel pin. That's the kind of thing you see right there. So that's uh, what makes a decent motor a bad motor real quick. So we'll take this part and get some dowel pins out of it. All these little, uh, these little parts are hard to find. A lot of the aftermarket parts are the, their uh, repops and they're not quite correct and uh, you can have some issues so we got a good cam bearing good set of cam bearings it looks like i've been saving the old cam bearings now because the new cam bearings are so crappy and uh i find myself using used bearings in some situations especially in the cam area just because what you can buy now is no good so all right well there you go one short block disassembly let me go ahead and shut this off and uh i'll talk to you guys a little later